Peter noticed movement in the distance. And a sense of caution washed over him. Given recent reports of predators in the area, he approached carefully. As he drew nearer, hoping to spot the deer he sought, something else captured his attention. To his surprise, the deer he spotted was carrying a baby. Peter, taken aback, felt an urgent need to ensure the well-being of the infant facing a significant challenge. Peter opted for a slow and cautious approach, grappling with a barrage of questions and concerns racing through his mind. Moving quietly, he closed in on the deer from behind, observing as it gently placed the baby on the ground. Just as he thought the deer hadn't noticed him, its demeanor changed, setting off alarm bells in Peter's mind, Peter, feeling his heart pounding, knew any sudden move could be perilous. He stood completely still, hoping not to provoke the deer. To his relief, the deer, instead of confronting him, swiftly grabbed the baby and darted away. Despite Peter's attempt to track its movements, the deer proved too fast, realizing the gravity of the situation. Peter urgently tried to inform his fellow rangers to organize a rescue party for the baby. However, faced with disbelief, he found no support among them. Determined to seek help, Peter decided to involve the police. Despite the skepticism from his fellow rangers, he persisted in asserting that he had indeed witnessed the deer with a baby. Taking matters into his own hands, Peter made the call to the police. Unwilling to give up on ensuring the infant's safety convinced that Peter was losing his sanity. Those around him dismissed his account as mere hallucinations. Despite their skepticism, Peter persisted and reported the strange events to the police. The law enforcement response was swift. With numerous officers converging on the area, the first officers took Peter's account seriously. And more backup was on the way, unexpectedly. Peter's boss summoned the police officers into his office, where they seemingly disregarded Peter and proceeded into the forest. As additional police forces arrived, Peter was instructed to stay put. And the atmosphere became tense. Confused and unaware of the situation, Peter confronted his boss, only to be told to sit and wait for questioning, when the officers returned after a brief search. Peter was taken aback. Despite the vast forest, they claimed to have found nothing. In the subsequent questioning, Peter faced disbelief regarding the deer and the baby he had allegedly seen. Frustrated and feeling isolated, Peter insisted on the truth, the police, concluding their investigation, left, and Peter, unable to comprehend the situation, broke down, restricted to the office. He awaited a conversation with his boss, who ultimately suspended him from ranger duties. Peter, feeling abandoned and misunderstood, grappled with the belief that the world was against him, concerned about Peter's mental state. His boss and fellow ranger speculated that he may be experiencing hallucinations due to traumatic events in his life. Particularly the recent loss of his baby with his wife. Encouraging him to seek therapy. They attributed his claims to a troubled mind. Restricted from entering the forest. Peter. Determined to uncover the truth decided to visit early the next morning. Before embarking on this mission, he reached out to his best friend Jacob, a fellow ranger, for one final interaction that he experienced surprise upon encountering Peter. Having heard about the incident, Peter proceeded to narrate the entire story, emphasizing the urgency of reaching the forest to rescue the baby. Ikab, initially skeptical, hesitated to join their mission. However, Peter's emotional breakdown prompted Ikab to change his mind. 
Although he harbored concerns about the potential consequences of their decision, upon reaching the designated spot. Peter. Having previously spotted a deer. And Ikab noticed black deer tracks. Yaakov began to believe in Peter's account of seeing the deer but remained doubtful about the baby. While tracking the deer. They suddenly lost its trail. A nearby roar startled them. Confirming that they were in the deer's territory. Ikab. Frightened. Urged Peter to call for backup. But Peter. Having lost trust in others. Refused despite Ikab's reluctance. Peter convinced him to stay close as they approached a cave in the distance. The cave. Far from ordinary. Seemed to be the deer's lair. Inside. They spotted the deer. Confirming Peter's claims. Ikab. Now convinced but even more fearful. Observed no sign of the baby. He attempted to persuade Peter to return to the ranger's office for additional assistance. But Peter's stubbornness prevailed, suddenly. A noise emanated from the cave. And they heard crying. The deer reacted. Adding a new layer of mystery to the situation, the deer entered the cave. And moments later. It emerged. Causing the crying to cease. Peter became certain that the baby was inside the cave. However. The situation intensified when the deer turned its head toward Ikab. Jacob found himself in a tense moment. Unsure of how to react. Peter instructed him to freeze. But the deer. Now charging. Spotted Ikab. Peter attempted to distract the deer. But it focused solely on Ikab. Ikab sprinted away. Hearing the deer gaining on him. In a moment of misfortune. Ikab tripped but quickly climbed into a tree. Seemingly finding safety, the deer tried to reach Ikab in the tree. But Jacob appeared to be secure. Now alone. Peter saw a clear path to the cave and began walking towards it. Meanwhile. Ikab. Still in the tree. Screamed that the deer was returning. Without hesitation. Peter started running towards the cave entrance. Realizing he had some time before the deer caught up. As he approached the cave. Not hearing the deer nearby. Peter understood he had an opportunity to save the baby inside the dark cave. Peter heard a noise from deeper within and cautiously walked toward it. What he saw shocked him to the core. Finally spotting the baby. Seemingly unharmed at first glance. Peter didn't waste any time. Hearing noises in the distance. He realized the deer was returning. Peter turned off his light. Hearing the deer walk around the cave. Suddenly. The deer spotted him. And Peter found himself backed into a corner. Holding the baby. He was startled as the deer unexpectedly fell asleep. It dawned on Peter that the deer had been sedated by tranquilizer darts amidst the cacophony of surrounding noises. Peter became aware that more rangers had entered the cave to rescue him. Ikab had promptly contacted them before entering the forest. But their mission was far from over. The whereabouts of the baby's parents remained unknown. As no missing baby had been reported to the police, the rangers. With the assistance of the police. Transported the baby to the nearest hospital. While Peter received an apology. His determination to unravel the mystery remained steadfast. The rangers. Still in the dark. Pressed on. The baby underwent immediate inspection at the hospital. Where a team of doctors conducted thorough checks. Peter adamantly refused to let the baby out of his sight. And the police allowed him to stay with the child. A DNA sample was taken for identification purposes despite Peter's sleepless 24 hours. He vigilantly checked for updates from the lab hourly. Simultaneously, he learned that the deer, too, underwent inspection. Finally, after a prolonged wait, Peter received news, the deer was released back into the forest. 
and he felt relief that the animal was unharmed. However, concern lingered regarding the missing baby, as no one seemed to be searching for it. Feeling desperate, Peter's wife arrived and implored him to rest soon after. A police captain summoned Peter into an office. There, he learned that the deer had played an unexpected role in keeping the baby safe. The child was well fed, unharmed, and Peter felt a mix of emotions. Grateful for the deer's protection but still puzzled about the baby's origins, additional information emerged from the DNA results. Delivering another emotional blow. When the police captain shared the complete story with Peter, he couldn't contain his tears. Regrettably, the parents of the baby had been discovered in the forest. Having experienced a fatal car crash. Post-accident. The deer had taken the baby under its protection. Despite extensive efforts. No other family members were located facing a profound decision. Peter and his wife exchanged glances. Silently acknowledging what needed to be done. They chose to adopt the child. Raising the baby as their own. The couple found unparalleled joy in their newfound family. Peter, having reclaimed his position as a ranger, felt a sense of fulfillment and happiness like never before, over time. Their adopted son grew up and, inspired by his father, joined the ranks as a ranger. The family's story came full circle as the son followed in Peter's footsteps. Embodying the legacy of dedication and service. Let's continue, reciprocating kindness has always been a traditional virtue of human beings. This kind of emotion is not limited to humans. Animals are the same. Everything has emotion. In fact, animals have more pure emotions. They also know how to be grateful. If you help them, they will I will repay you twice. So no matter whether we encounter humans or small animals in deep trouble, we should lend a helping hand without hesitation. An uncle lived in a stag by chance, and often fed it. Unexpectedly, 30 minutes later, a wonderful scene appeared at the door of the uncle's house. What happened, Robert loved small animals very much when he was very young. He often asked his parents to take him on an dot adventure in the forest during the holidays. Because he could meet different kinds of small animals in this way. When he became an adult, Robert resolutely moved to live in a wooden house near the forest, this day is a day for Robert to rest. He is preparing to go to the forest as usual. Looking forward to some unexpected gains today. Not long after Robert walked in the forest, he heard a strange sound not far away. He went out to be curious. And Robert walked in the direction of the sound to find out. But the next scene made him never expect it. A deer was accidentally stuck in a swamp. At this time, the deer was writhing in the swamp, trying to get out of the swamp. But the more it struggled, the deeper it sank, until only its head remained above the water. Robert didn't think too much. He only knew that if the trapped deer was not rescued in time, then the deer's life would be in danger. Robert immediately took off his clothes and walked into the swamp without hesitation that he slowly swam to the side of the deer, and kept cleaning the mud around its hooves with his hands. The deer struggled a few times, but still failed to jump ashore. Robert had no choice but to pull it towards him, carried it on his neck and walked towards the shore bit by bit. He clearly understood that in order to get the deer out of the predicament, he had to carry it across the entire swamp, which was full of rotten mud. It was very difficult for Robert to take every step. Because of the weight on his body, he sank into waist-deep mud several times. Fortunately, Robert had more experience and finally walked out of the swamp by dot walking on his knees dot I in order to prevent the deer from straying into the swamp again. Robert carried it into the forest and placed it in a clearing. At this time, 
The deer was exhausted and didn't even have the strength to stand up. After several hours, the deer finally regained its vitality. With Robert's support, the deer stood up tremblingly and walked into the forest bit by bit. When it was time to say goodbye, Robert turned around and walked down the mountain. The deer stopped and watched the back of the benefactor quietly, as if expressing his gratitude in his own way many years later. Robert had long forgotten about saving the deer. But what he didn't expect was that the deer appeared at his door again that day. Robert went out to work as usual. And he found a deer at the door of his house. Robert stepped forward. And he didn't know why a deer appeared here. Just when he was puzzled. The little deer came to him and gently rubbed its head against Robert's body. And Robert also gently stroked the little deer's head. And then suddenly realized that he recognized the little deer was the one he saved back. The deer looks a lot bigger than before. But its body doesn't look strong. It should be that it has not eaten for a long time. And its body looks a little weak. Robert hurriedly took out food from the house and fed it to the deer. Robert looked at the deer eating happily. Showing a gratified smile the next day. Before Robert went out. He heard something walking back and forth outside. He came to the door curiously. And was shocked when he opened the door. There was a herd of deer staring at him outside the door. The one who took the lead was yesterday's little deer. Only then did Robert realize that the deer had brought his own group with him. Robert guessed that the deer may have encountered a food crisis. And Robert's good reputation for charity had already spread among the deer. Robert felt both helpless and happy. And then took out a lot of food from the house and fed it to the big family. I end the days to come. The herd of deer and Robert formed a harmonious eating and drinking relationship. Every time it was meal time, the deers would come to his house to eat. Robert is also very generous and enthusiastically brought out food to entertain this special group of friends. Robert enjoys the joy of feeding and is healed by the lovely deer at the same time the moving story between the deer and humans does not stop here. A British country girl also rescued a deer but unexpectedly received that the deer's grace. What touching story happened point 24 year old and was born in the beautiful Basingstoke, Hampshire, England. Her family runs a ranch. The yard of the farmhouse is very large. And she often patronizes some small animals in the surrounding mountains. One spring. And heard some noises outside the farmhouse. And her father and she planned to go out to see what was going on. On the empty lawn. A group of little guys were lying powerlessly on the ground. And not far away was an angry doe. It seems that the little guy's mother didn't find a good place to give birth. According to Anne's ranch. There are two herds of deer. Both of which have their own territories. And this little guy was born on a disputed lawn. A female deer in the deer herd rushed over aggressively. And the mother deer who was still resting soon after giving birth was attacked. And she also fled in a hurry. Left behind are cubs whose eyes aren't even fully open and who can't stand up, and and her father ran to them and found that the deer, which had only seen the sun not long ago, looked very weak. It was motionless and Anne's father wrapped it in a small blanket. The father said that it was breathing weakly, and it would not survive tonight if it was thrown outside. It was so pitiful, and begged her father to adopt the deer. At least let it go through the dangerous period before sending it back to the wild. The father and daughter finally adopted the little deer. The deer recovered fairly quickly. Soon after, the deer was able to stand up tremblingly like a cub of the same age. It's just that it was timid at the beginning. And it would get scared when it made a slight noise. Fortunately. And was very patient. Since she proposed to adopt the deer. She would take care of the deer's daily life by herself. The deer grows rapidly in this warm human family. When it is four months old. 
It is already a cub that needs more space to move around and can eat grass, and try to cultivate the deer's ability to survive in the wild and let it communicate with the deer. When the deer was brought to the herd for the first time, the little guy was shaking and looked terrified. But this time, its appearance was not attacked by the same kind again. The herd accepted him to graze beside him, including his mother. And he also reaccepted the little deer. In summer, the deer has lost its childishness and turned into a beautiful little male deer. He enjoyed being back among the deer. And then knew that was where he should be when and came home on the weekend. She recognized the deer from a distance from the deer. The deer also saw her and rushed towards her immediately. It ran over to Anne's pants and rubbed her hand. And didn't know what to say. She squatted down and gave the deer a hug and kiss, thank you for remembering us. And knew that maybe one day in the future. The deer would no longer go through the deer herd looking for her. But what would never fade would be those beautiful memories, although the race is crossed. The feelings of animals and humans are interlinked. You can understand each other's mind without language communication. When you express your kindness, you will be rewarded with kindness. Therefore, we should not be stingy with our love for small animals. Treat animals well and live in harmony with them.